morning. Everybody here to learn how to declutter, learn about aging in place and some living options. Great. Thank you for coming this morning. Good morning. It's early on a Saturday, but I'm glad to see all the people here. There is coffee and some tea in the foyer after you're done. If you're a little cold, go have some coffee. I'm Cynthia Arnold. I'm with Senior Move Managers at Declutter Hawaii. Um, and Danny Hara is the owner of Senior Move Managers Declutter Hawaii, Keller Williams Ihara team, <laughs> and the Complete Solution. So we're here today to talk to you about um, downsizing, decluttering, and aging in place. Thank you, Sid. Good morning. You know, this is not church here. You can come to the front. <laughs> All right, good morning, good morning. Um, so, everyone here has trouble with decluttering and downsizing, right? Yes. Actually, you're not the only ones. Everybody else out there should be here too. <laughs> so, um, Senior Move Managers, we started it about, uh, gosh, five years ago. And because it was a, we found a, a phenomenon that was very interesting. I'm a realtor and we're helping seniors get their home ready for sale, although we find that, wow, they got, they got a lot of stuff. And uh, it was really tough for them to go through this, so we started doing it on our own, and we thought it was just, it was just too busy. We had to create a whole other entity to do that. When we started Senior Move Managers, we're part of the National Association of Senior Move Managers. There's an entire industry of companies like this around the country. Now there's about 850 of them. When we started, there was only 400. We were the first, and we are still the only member of the National Association of Senior Move Managers here in Hawaii. Uh, we're also a uh, Better Business Bureau accredited business. It takes a number of years to get through that process. So we're very proud of that. Um, let me just start with this. You know, I'm not disorganized. I know exactly where everything is. The newer stuff's on the top and the older stuff's at the bottom. Does that look like your office, maybe? Um, or this one. I mean, you hear this a lot. Just think, darling, one day this will all be yours. And as most of you are adult children of seniors who may be in that situation, and this is really common because they'll say to us, oh, don't worry, my kid's gonna take care of the house. And, and I say, so what about the stuff? So, yeah, yeah, they want all this stuff. And I turn to them and they're like, ah, no, not us, get rid of it, right? So what we do is we specialize in downsizing and decluttering, uh, estate clear outs, um, families who have passed on and the trust comes in and has to clear everything out. Aging in place. Um, although I'm a realtor, I'm actually a CAP certified specialist, which is a certified aging in place specialist. So our, our mission is not to help people get rid of their home. Our, our mission is to help people live wherever they want to live. So if your home is where you want to be, we're going to try to do everything we can to keep you there in the best condition in, in, in um, comfort is possible with little risk and we'll find out we'll show you a little bit more of how we do that for people we help you with customized floor planning and organizing your space we help you remove all unwanted items off the property uh, and as our clients get older you know some of these old things that are in the house stay in the house because they're just too heavy to move right and things collect and then we pile stuff on top of it uh, and we just help you decide you know, what to keep or what to toss. Uh, we don't make decisions for you, though we'll ask you a series of questions that might help you make those decisions. So the typical scenario is, you know, many of you could be retired or maybe starting to plan to retire in the near future, and you know, you want to stay at home, you want to age in place. Aging in place means a number of things to different people. Sometimes it's aging in place at home in your current home, Sometimes it's, well, my house is too big, so I need to move to a smaller home or condo. Whatever that is, it's where you are, and that only you can decide on where that's going to be. Wherever it is, we find that um, many cases, the longer you stay there, uh, the more dangerous it becomes, uh, and safety risks rise because of the stuff that we collect. You may need some extra assistance as you age, and we have contacts through all of the community uh, services that are available here in the state, uh, private and public services that can help you uh, age in place. Um, you know, you've lived in your home a long time and you collect a lot of stuff. How many of you have lived in your home for more than 20 years? 30 years? 40 years? 
50 years. 50, that's it. Okay. Our records, a lady who was 89 years old, she lived in her home 89 years. Wow. She collected a lot of things over time. Yeah. And at a certain point, it's just, it, your things actually kind of trap you in your home. I don't know if you, do you guys watch the show Hoarders? Have you ever seen it? It's, it's kind of daunting to, to watch. It's real. It is real. It happens here. And uh, I would say maybe 10% of our clients are in that situation with a word. Uh, severe order. So there's five levels of dysfunctional, uh, disorganization, they call it, of hoarding. Uh, we all have a list of the one level. Um, many of us have two, some have three. When you get to four and five, it gets a little uh, dangerous. Level five is where you gotta wear a hazmat suit to enter that room just to keep yourself safe. So there are many different levels and we've seen it all. And people tell us, well, I want you to come over, but let me clean up first. <laughs> you don't have to clean up, we've seen everything. Okay, we've seen everything. And you'll see some pictures later today. Um, or you maybe know somebody who needs some help and you're not sure how to give them help. And so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to you about some tips that might help you help other people or a service that might help you help other people. So letting go of your things is really tough. You know, detaching from your personal belongings, that's the hardest thing we have to do. As we get older, it gets harder and harder. We get used to things and we think, gosh, I need that, I need that. And you really have never seen it for a while. Uh, what can happen though is with space planning, it's gonna help you detach from your things. Because you're gonna realize that you really don't that's kind of what we do. It's, it's almost like a, a care service that we provide as well as removing physical things. You know, it's a lifetime of memories. You know, most people say, gosh, I need everything. We had a lady come in, she said, oh, I'm gonna sell my to the retirement community. She said, oh, what are you gonna take with you? I said, oh, I'm gonna take everything. And I, oh, okay. She's moving from a 2,500 square foot home to 690 square feet. Okay. <laughs> So tell me about that, right? And so she starts talking about every item, and it, it was maybe a bureau about this long. It took about half an hour to get from one into the other, because she told me stories about every item. But you know what was interesting is, the next time I came back, I said, so what are you gonna take? Have you made any decisions? Oh yeah, I'm not, I don't need this stuff. What happens is she let go of it emotionally. She let go of it because she, she gave it to me in her words. She gave the value that she had in her heart to somebody else that was independent of her family. And that made her feel good. It made her feel like, yeah, there was a purpose for having this. And now that she told me about it, I can now let it go. It was a really interesting um, phenomenon that I noticed. And it was the first time I had experienced that. And it happens all the time. Because as people talk about things, they do let go. Because you don't need it physically, you need it emotionally. But they say, I need it, right? You know, and it's not clutter, right? To you, it's something of value, right? And you know, remember, when you're downsizing, you know, how much do you really want to keep? Or how much do you really want to take with you? How many would like to downsize? <coughs> yeah, good, yeah, you're all in the right place. So some of the tips to age in place gracefully is, what we focus on is number one, removing your trip hazards. Right? Look around your home, find out where your path of traffic is in your home, and find out what areas could be a challenge. Anything that's on the ground, basically, right? Uh, wires that are on the ground, extension cords, rugs, throw rugs, um, plastic bags. You know, you come home from Long's and you drop the bags off, and uh, I'll put it away later. That night you go and kick it and you fall. Fault trip hazards, uh, as you all know, are very dangerous. Uh, and it's really increased the number of visits that seniors do to emergency groups. So we really want to help you remove trip hazards. Increased lighting. Uh, most of these older homes and clients that I have that are older have the original lighting. You know that the, the, the indirect lighting, you know, it doesn't provide much light especially at night. And as we get older, our vision doesn't get better, right? And, and during the night, it gets more challenging. So increasing lighting really makes a big difference. Um, part of increasing lighting is if you painted the walls as well. 
then that would increase light because the light will reflect off of the walls. So things like that. Removing all the clutter, things that really don't need to be in, in your path or on the countertops. Right? <coughs> Adding grab rail bars in certain areas, maybe in a hallway, maybe by the bathroom, in the shower. What we'll find is most people who fall should could fall are typically at night, you know, we wake up, you gotta go to the bathroom, right? You're tired, you can't see real good, it's dark, something is going you should can fall. Or if you have a path that's clear, if you had a grab rail bar that you knew you were comfortable with, that process gets easier, right? And you gain confidence in that. And you can minimize trip falls. And accessing uh, mobility issues, you know, now and in the future, you know, although you might be healthy now, is that home gonna fit your needs? five or 10 years from now? Is that space gonna fit your needs? Do you have stairs, right? Do you wanna consider getting a flat area to live in, a flat home or a condo, something safer? Or do you wanna consider getting one of the ramps? That are, well, we'll show you some pictures later about that. Uh, and then, you know, really safety is our biggest concern. When we walk into homes, when clients call us, that's one of the first things we look at is, wow, I can see so many hazards in a home that we walk into that uh, could be a problem. You know, as we get older, you trip and fall. Many of our clients say trip and fall, they can't go back home, right? Because they'll, they'll break an arm, break a wrist, break a hip. And as we get older, it's hard to heal. Yeah, it takes longer to heal. And especially if you have stairs, that could be a challenge. Now I'd like to bring up Cynthia, and she'll talk about some tips that will help you uh, conquer your clutter. <laughs> so some of the tips to collect to conquer this clutter is start with the least used rooms or closets. And a lot of people say, why? You know, most of my stuff is in the bedroom. But we're so personal to our bedroom and our personal space that it's really hard to get rid of those things first. Right? If, if, if any of us go to our closet today, how many of us can, can declutter our closets? Not very many, right? Because you'll look at it, oh, I'll wear that dress, so oh, maybe I'll need to wear like, you know, a suit one day. So we always have reasons for the things that we're most personal to. So let's start with the least used rooms and closets. Maybe that guest bedroom, your son graduated 10 years ago, went to college, isn't coming home, but somehow his clothes and his books and everything are still in that room. Let's start with those areas because it's least personal to us. What we want to do is we want to gain that momentum so that when we get to our bedrooms, it's a lot easier to declutter it, okay? The least used, maybe some closets. We always start with a linen closet because somehow we have more towels and more sheets than we probably ever use, right? Most of us, we use the same towels that are hanging on the, on the racks. We throw that into the washing machine, then into the dryer, and then we put it back on our rack, right? How many of us actually use all the 10 sets of towels we have in our closet? So those are the easier spaces to start with. That way we start gaining our momentum. Number two, schedule time to start and set mini goals. Right? Some of us say, oh yeah, I'm gonna clear out my whole garage and, and oh, this weekend. Is that realistic? Do we have maybe 100 boxes in the garage that we kept storing for 10, 20 years? Right? We wanna set mini goals to accomplish that big goal. Because what we do is if we set a big goal and don't accomplish it in an unrealistic time, then we say, eh, I can't do it. I'm going to put a towel over it. Or let's put a tarp over it because I can't see it. right? <laughs> or we close the garage, we bolt it down, and we start parking in the driveway. I've even gone to see that people put tents up on their driveway because uh -huh. they want shelter right, for their car. So let's schedule a time to start. Be committed and set your mini goals. That way we can accomplish it. We want to sort your things into four piles of stuff. Right? Think about your home having four piles of stuff. I've had people come and say, oh, you've never seen my home. There's got like 10 piles. But there are really just four different categories in your home, and we'll discuss that shortly. Begin with the high traffic areas. How many of you have stuff in your hallway? Our hallways are only three feet wide, but somehow it becomes a foot and a half because we start putting a bookcase over there. Oh, that's a space for the DVDs. Oh, we can just line boxes. We've gone into so many homes. 
And I feel like, okay, the, the hallway is now only a foot and a half high, right? And we start using the walls and the bookcases to hold ourselves up. Right? We want to start with those high traffic areas because that's where we walk every day. Right? We don't want to trip. My, um, my grandmother was doing some stuff for a garage sale and she had everything out in her house the day before. And that night, she went to go get water and she tripped over something because it's usually not there, right? And it was in a high traffic area. So we want to make sure that we're careful, that we don't want to trip and fall at night, like Dan said, increase lighting and decluttering your areas. And number five, minimize those incoming items. I know how hard it is. I go to Long's on Saturday or Sunday, Monday, and there are people with a whole cart full of stuff. And I'm looking at them thinking, I wonder how much stuff they have at home. Yeah. Right? When five cans of beans are on sale, we have to buy five cans of beans. How many of us went to Long's when Spam was on sale for $159? <laughs> okay, I went because I make Spam sweets, but there were people buying cases of them. And I'm thinking, wow, how much Spam are they going to eat? Right? We end up buying so much and then we don't have space to put it. I've gone into homes and actually this is when I was pregnant, so I was about eight months pregnant, and I had to walk like this. I had to walk so I could see my feet because there were canned goods, there were groceries. Like Dad mentioned, you bring your grocery bags home, you just lay it on the ground because you have no place to put it. Right? We want to minimize those incoming items. Before we go out to Costco, before we go out to Long's or save for our times, make sure you check your list and check your cover. Right? If you have 20 cans of beans in there, maybe we don't have to buy five this week. Wait a five more weeks so we can buy it again. Okay. Minimize those incoming items and be careful with canned goods because if you stack them and they're not stackable, it hurts when it falls in your toe. Mm. Yeah. Share your goals. Tell somebody, right? Tell somebody so that you can be held accountable. Because how many of us want to see our friend that we see once a month at Bridge and they say, oh, how's your garage going? You're not going to want to tell them, oh, I didn't start anything. Oh, I was lazy. Oh, this came up. Right? We want to tell them something good. I've even had some clients show me pictures on their phone. Everyone's got smartphones now, right? I've had clients take pictures and say, look at what I did. I organized my closet. So you want to be held accountable. And the easiest thing we tell people is to tell somebody, not maybe necessarily your husband or your wife or your kids, but somebody, a friend, somebody you see once in a while, so that next time they see you, they'll ask you about your project. So some of the questions to help yourself through this process, and this is, I tell people, have somebody ask you these questions because it, it'll get in your head. Do you really need it? If I came to your house today and I asked you that question, you'd probably say I need everything in this home. Right? Because why else would I have it? Okay, well, when was the last time you used it? Now, if you got to scratch your head, your eyes go to the back, like, oh, what year is it now? Oh, my goodness, it's August already. Oh, maybe five years ago. Well, when will you use it again? Most people will use it tomorrow. Or they'll say, oh, I'm going to go to a party and I need to use that mixer to make the blah, 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 the yada, 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 right? We find reasons on why we need to use it again. So then we start this question again. Do you really need it? When was the last time you used it? And when will you use it again? Most of our clients who do use it again, after that, they're ready to release it. The way we figure is most people won't want to spend $250 on an item and use it once. Right? If they use it again, they feel like, okay, I've used it twice. I didn't just buy it for that one reason. Now I can donate it to the church. Now I can give it to my family. Now I can give it to Goodwill or any donation place. Other questions we ask is, how often do you use it? People say, well, you know, I decorate my house every year for Christmas. Okay. Those are Christmas items. Let's put it somewhere, let's organize it, put it somewhere where you can go and get it once a year. But if you use it once every five years, is that irreplaceable? Is the, can you get it every five years when you need it? Is it worth, if it's worth $50, is it really worth saving it and taking up that space? Right? We want to think about all the things you want to keep, where we can organize it, and what's the most important to you. Oh, the other thing I tell people is don't have your spouse ask you the questions, right? Because it comes out differently. Hun, you really need that. You don't need it. No, you only use it once a year. You only use it once every five years. 
gosh, we bought it 10 years ago, just throw them away. Right? It comes out so much differently. It comes out a little harsher. Right? But when it's a friend, it's like, oh, what? You know, do you really need this mixer? Why do you use it? Right? The tone is so much different than when it's someone close to you. And that's kind of the reason why a lot of the children of our clients say, I don't know how you got mom to get rid of all that stuff. And it's because we come out differently, right? We're a professional, and we don't we don't say, oh, Mrs. Uh, you don't need that stuff. Don't worry about it, right? Because it's not very nice, right? It's like Dad said, it's not clutter to us, right? So this is the four categories of things in your home. We use this SORT acronym for sell, offer, retain, and toss. Okay, we want to start with the things you want to retain. Things you want to keep with you, things you're going to take with you, should you move. You start with the bigger items and work your way to the smaller items. Everything else, you don't want, right? You're not going to retain. So then we help you to categorize them in offer. Maybe offer to your friends, offer to your family, or donate it to a nonprofit organization. Maybe it's worth some money. Maybe we'll try to sell it. Maybe it's worth a couple hundred dollars. Maybe it's nice tools, um, nice used furniture. Um, some antiques, maybe we can try to sell it. Unfortunately, if we can't sell it, if nobody wants it, no family and friends want it, not even the donation places are taking it, the last pile is the toss pile. Right? Things that maybe termite eaten, um, has too much rust on it, or that there's an abundance of things. This is before the toss. An eight-year-old woman with a weight machine. Right? A lot of this stuff was not even hers. Right? How many of you would say no to your child? Mom, can I leave my weight system here? Oh, I'll come work out at your house. I get to come see you at least twice a week. And then it just stays there. Right? 20 years later, this is what happens. We had to throw out all of that stuff. It's a three-car garage. I believe it was a 40-foot container of stuff that had to go into the trash. This is garage. What we usually do is we, when we sort things out, we stage things. So this is our garage of stage items for um, trash. You notice that there's paint. Paint is actually technically not hazardous if it's dry. So if you have paint and you don't know what to do with it, open it up, let it dry. Once it's completely dry, you can throw it in your um, gray bins. Is so much stuff we accumulate? A kitchen. So the backstory of this is this client was going to have heart surgery, and she, her doctor said, you're not allowed to come back to your home and recuperate. You're going to have to go to a care home of some sort. And she didn't want to do that. She wanted to come home. She called us. She, she met me three years ago. She had my card at the brochure, and she said, every time I picked up the phone, I hung it up because I was afraid what I was going to think of her house. I said, why? We see this every day. So we went back. Um, two weeks, we cleared this house. We helped sort things. We helped to place things in the right areas. You see all the paperwork? We don't want to keep paper and stuff in the, in the kitchens, right? Okay. It looks like all we did was throw everything away. What we actually did was the entire house looked like that. So we had to designate each room to be her master bedroom, her office, her craft room, her spare room. And then we decluttered the areas and then put everything back in its place. So she actually, this is her living room. She slept right here on this couch. She ate lunch, she ate dinner, she ate breakfast. She did everything on that couch. So uh, the great story was a few months later, she recuperated and she got to go to Japan. She didn't think she was going to get to go to Japan because her doctor said she probably won't recuperate well enough. But she got to do it because her home was cleared and decluttered. This is the dining room. Same house. She actually could have friends over now. She was like, thank you. I can actually have friends come in my house now. So our decluttering services, we help plan, schedule, and coordinate. Whether you're going to move, whether you're going to age a place, whether you're going to rent the house, sell the house, anything. We help you plan it from start to finish. We'll help you organize your items in the sort pile. People always say, oh, you're just going to tell me what to do with it. And we actually don't. We'll talk with you about what items that you want to keep and not keep, and we'll help you to find a space for it. And we help you determine what to keep, 
We create a space plan for your home. And this is actually really important, especially if you're going to be moving. Because a lot of people say, oh yeah, the room is about this size. And then when we get to it, it's like, no, it's not that size. Right? So we want to make a floor plan so that we know exactly where everything is going to go. We schedule and coordinate any vendors. Maybe you need a cleaning company, maybe you need the carpet, shampoo, maybe you need the electricity, we check, the plumbing. We help and oversee all of those vendors. And then we help you remove all the property off, all the items off your property. Whether, like I said, to donate, to sell, to trash, or to keep, we'll help you pack up and move. This is a customized floor plan. We go in there and we draw a floor plan on a one, one foot by one foot grid. Right? And then we talk to you about what items you want to keep or take with you. We can also do this to your existing home if you're going to age in place. Okay? We want to make sure that your home is exactly identical to what you had if you're moving. Right? So in this situation, we kept the living room similar and then the bedroom similar. Because when you move, you don't want to have the nightstand move too. Right? You don't want it on the left side when it was always on the right side. Protecting your valuables. I come from a very large family. Um, Dan is one of six. I'm one of 14 grandkids. We have 36 in our family now. And protecting our family heirlooms and pictures and photos are really important. I actually just found, uh, my grandfather gave us an eight millimeter, that one. I took it to Costco, spent $15 to digitize it. I had no idea what was on it. All it said was Cynthia, 1982. And I was three years old. So we watched it, and it's actually my cousin and I. I was three and she was just born. And watching us interact with each other was really cool because we, we would never know. And my daughter is one, a three, and her daughter is six. So it's kind of cool to see how we used to be. Locating wills, trust, life insurance, documents. We don't need to know where it is, but we want to make sure that your beneficiaries and your heirs know. The other thing about that house I told you about that she was going to have heart surgery, she told us, my will and my documents are somewhere in this house. I don't know where it is. And my doctor needs it before I go under the knife. We found it. We did find it. Protecting financial information, you want to make sure you shred stuff. Okay, um, especially the older things, because as we go into our clients' homes, we see stuff from the 1970s, 1960s. I actually found taxes from like the 50s and some old checks. Those have our social security number on it. If you look at your old Morgan Stanley statements and those kind of statements, they have they use your social security number as your identification number. So make sure that you shred those things. And then keeping family involved is desired. We've had clients that we've never even met face to face because we can keep them involved via email, via video, via photos. Getting organized, you want to identify the most valuable space in your home. You want to make sure yeah, that you determine what items you use the most, right? What items in your kitchen do you use every day? What items in your bathroom and your bedroom do you use every day? And look for places and to be more efficient, right? Maybe you have your kitchen is really nice, but is it efficient? Do you have to go on a stair every day just to, a ladder just to get the plates? You know, why not bring it down and put the other things above, right? So we look at the spaces, your closets, your kitchen cabinets, all those areas and try to find a better way to be more efficient with the space. This is a living room. And the other thing you want to watch is Dan was talking about increasing lighting. And look at what paint does. Right? Paint brought the room alive, right? This is a shoe rack. Everybody has a shoe box, right? You just throw your shoes in there, you close the door, you don't want to see them. And then in the morning you gotta make sure. Okay, I got two same slippers. You gotta make sure you got same slippers on your feet, right? Your shoes. But this is a shoe tree. We have we have catalogs outside uh, for Simply Organized. We are, we are a partner with them with a lot of things. And you can buy a shoe tree there, and it organizes all your shoes. 36 pairs of shoes. There's also some that are 18 and 24. But it only takes up one square foot of space. So the space that I'm standing in right now could be 36 pairs of shoes. If you have that many. Creating usable space. This is a bench, very easy. You can put stuff in it, put it at the end of your bed. You can sit down and put your shoes on, your pants on in the day. And if, as long as you have space for it, we can do things like this, creating usable space. Easy wire wraps. You see all this space that's not been used? You just put wire wraps on it, and now all the holes are not uneven. Right? You can get to the plates without picking up the platters. 
Very simple, easy. Aging in place options. I'm going to head this one back over to Dan. Thanks, Ed. You know, a lot of people ask me, what, what should I do? Uh, I want to age in place. Most commonly, we find that it's family taking care of family. You know, most people say to me, uh, oh, don't worry about me. My kids are going to take care of me. I said, well, when you talk to them, do they know about this? <laughs> they want to have, have that conversation. Uh, uh, my kids said they're not going <laughs> to. So I just made it real clear that we're putting in common. <laughs> um, home care and home health care services, we'll talk a little bit about that. We have some providers here today that you should talk to. And then adult day services. Uh, like Cynthia said, you know, we come from a large family. Cynthia's actually my niece, if you know that. Um, my sister, Sherry, is here, and that's her mother. Um, and we just find that fam family's love is really precious. And, you know, caretaking, though, can bring the best and the worst out of people. How many of you have been caregivers before? I applaud you. That is just an amazing human sacrifice that you've done for another family member. Uh, but as you know, if you've been there, you've realized there have been some great days and some maybe not so great days, right? And both the caregiver and the senior will need respite. They'll need time away from each other, right? So there's some options for you here as well. And it'll also change your life. For those of you who've done it, you know that you had to stop working. You had to stop doing the things you wanted to do. And, and it will change your life. A home care model is really a social model. Uh, it's really about companion services. Uh, things like you know, bathing, dressing, grooming, that type of services. Uh, it does have a little limited health care services, like you know, checking your vitals and doing your temperature and, and things like that. They'll help you with meal preparation, uh, getting food, uh, do light housekeeping with cleaning the house, dusting, mopping, doing the kitchen as well. And then mobility issues as far as getting from your bed to the table and from maybe even uh, transportation services or, or running errands, going to the hospital, going to the uh, doctor or the store. Um, the uh, clinical model is home health care. That's a little bit different. It's a higher level of service. Uh, typically some kind of therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, that type of thing. It's a skilled service. Um, anytime you have any open wound or, or trichotomy or anything that enters your, your, your body basically will, will need that kind of level of service. Medicare does reimburse for that. Uh, you do have to be homebound and you also have to have a physician's prescription for that um, uh, service. And it'll, it does have a limit. It'll cover up to about 100, 100 days per incident. Per incident. So if you break your elbow and you need that care and then for 100 days and then if something else happens, you get pneumonia, you need that care. Uh, Medicare will cover up to 100 days per year per incident. Yeah. We do strongly recommend that you uh, seek some, um, some some advice on that as well. We're not specialists in it, I'm just covering some general um, uh, items that we own. Um, and you do want to check with your long-term care provider as well. And it also has to be a licensed agency. So your niece can't come in and do this service unless she's licensed. So how much does that cost? Home care, you're running about $24 to $30 an hour uh, based on a singular couple. Home health care, as you notice, is a little bit higher. It's $35 to $75 and up per hour based on the needs um, uh, that you have. Uh, and 24-hour care gets kind of expensive. 24-hour care can run you fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month based on the level of service and need that uh, has to, you're, you're looking for. So adult daycare and uh, day health care, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to provide respite. There's some opportunities here for people to see that you know you can um, provide that leave a loved one somewhere safe, know that they're going to be taken care of. Uh, they do provide social and emotional stimulation uh, to some level. Um, they typically will provide two meals a day. So what, what we find is a lot of folks maybe once or twice a week to give a little respite or if you are a caregiver and you need to wait, get away to do your thing, uh, you can drop them off for the day, eight or nine o'clock in the morning and they'll have a snack and they'll have lunch and then they'll have maybe another snack later. Um, you do have to get yourself there most of the time. And you have to, not, they don't provide transportation. So you'd have to drop them off and then pick them up. Yeah, and it's not babysitting. It's, they do try to provide good uh, cerebral stimulation for those who are there. 
Because that's really what we look at is when we, when we see a, a senior who's by themselves, living by themselves, uh, that's a little bit of a concern for us. It can be over time, we really don't have that cerebral stimulation. And so your decline will increase, right? I mean, people say, well, what do you do? Oh, I turn on the TV and I kind of watch them more. It watches me half the time, right? That's not real cerebral stimulation. You need that dialogue and that interaction with another human being to really help you um, get your mind going and keep you healthy mentally. How much does that cost? It's about $72 a day for adult daycare and then about $92 a day for adult day health. But it's a relatively effective option for you. Uh, when you're researching them, what you want to do is just ask for references, you know, and visit the site and, and look at see how the facility is run and maintained and, you know, take a look at how they talk to their clients and, and the interaction that they have, you know, talk to the staff, find out how, they, how they're going to present themselves. And I always like to just sit back and watch the interaction between the staff and the, the client that's there. I like to see, you know, how they're treating it. Again, most of these community um, services are very good. Okay, uh, repairs and renovations that might help. Uh, painting, flooring, lighting, increasing security. A lot of people are concerned about that. Uh, updating kitchens and baths and uh, aging in place modifications are all things that we can help coordinate. Um, this was an, actually a sale of a home, an estate sale. That, uh, you know, abandoned vehicles, uh, a pile of stuff in the garage. You know, trees that are growing through the roof, and um, you cleared it out and got um, that going on. Uh, curb appeal makes a big difference, right? And then painting. Even if you're aging in place, you really, if your home looks like this, you really don't want it to look like this. What will happen is, um, paint is like a sealant to a wood, if you can think of it that way. And as the paint cracks and peels, water gets behind it. When water gets in the wood and you get wood rot, uh, termites also love water and they're going to get attracted to it. So it's going to increase the decline of your home as well. So if, if it is like that, you may want to, even if you're going to stay there, you probably still want to have it painted. Yeah. Uh, it makes a big difference, you know, things like this can go away and look good lives. And what it also does is it makes you feel good about it. Right? And so a lot of what we talk about and what we experience is, is really about an emotion that people have and we want to increase that level so you feel good about life and feel good about where you are you know, if you're going to stay home. An old kitchen like that, we had it renovated to something like that. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, they just want to grab something nice in there. Um, Order kitchens. So a lot of things can be done to add lighting and light. lightening up the, the colors will really help. As Cynthia mentioned earlier, uh, and this is a complete remodel. Bathrooms, kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's real dated. This is just glaze, right? It doesn't last forever, though it does help out uh, in the appearance of it. So assists uh, like walk-in showers, these, these bars are great, having a handle, having a bench is really helpful. For those who are, are getting older, you know, to sit down and take a shower is so much safer than standing up and doing one of this, and, you know, it's, you can slip and fall on your own one foot, right? And so we like to see benches, we like to, if you don't have space for a bench, we like to see those little plastic chairs in there, just to be able to sit down and be safer while you're taking a bath. A lot of falls happen in the bathroom. Um, you know, walk-in showers are really good. At some point, if you're going to need a wheelchair, you want to be able to just wheel it straight in, right? So we like to look at uh, barrier-free shower stalls. These are just like rubber; they just roll right over it. It slows down the water so it doesn't come out. And then all of them have grab rail bars. This is funny. I just came back from Fiji on Sunday, and I had to take a picture of this. This is a ramp. <laughs> it's in a third world country. Right? Look at this. This is about four and a half, five feet high from top to bottom. 
And there were stairs here, and somebody said, well, I need a ramp, so they probably just poured cement in. <laughs> I tried to walk down, it's really dangerous. Okay. This is what they really should look like, right? You don't want it steep because it's really hard. I don't know for those of you who have sat in a wheelchair or tried to move around in a wheelchair or had to push somebody in a wheelchair, every quarter inch is really tough to get over. You know, in our certified aging in place workshop, I had to sit in a wheelchair for eight hours. They made me go down the street, cross the street, back in the street. I had to sit in that chair eight hours, use the bathroom from it, wash my hands from it, eat from it. You really understand how it feels once you're in somebody else's shoes. It was a very good experience for me. And getting up a hill is really tough on your own. And that's why it's, it's very great in there. Um, and if you don't, if you have a bath and you like to sit in a bath, these things are really cool to do because it'll help you get in and out of it. Most people don't do baths, but some people like to. And if you're going to try to provide some assists for you, that's another option. If you have a home with stairs um, and you really, really want to stay there, you can also put in chair lifts. As long as your your hallway, like your, your stairs are wide enough to do that. Um, so who is Decoder White? Um, we're just a small local family run business. Uh, my wife and I started it a while ago. My niece Cynthia it runs the operations. Um, and most of the folks that work with us are here from our church. Um, and we just really, our goal is to provide a solution to any, any problem that you have. There are limits, and the limit is as long as it's legal, we'll do it. <laughs> That's probably the only limit we have. Uh, we're your one-stop shop support team. You know, if you need to move things to the mainland to send it to a, a, a family member, to you need to clean your house, or you need to repair screens, uh, or you need to find services to care in-house, we're, we're the complete solution for seniors. So whatever it is you need, our goal is to find it for you. And we'll walk you through the entire transition. You know, if at some point your home's not the best place for you, uh, we provide you options. We have clients in every retirement community and most of the care homes here in Hawaii. Uh, we understand what they're like on the mainland as well, because I travel a lot and I do work in, in the West Coast um, as well. And we'll help you reach your goals within your time frame. So it's nothing to do about us, it's all about you and, and, and what our client wants and what their goals are. Right? They want to get things done in a week, we'll push things up. If they want to do things in five years, that's fine too. Uh, whatever your goals are is what our goal is. And we provide that peace of mind and that way we minimize that stress in your life. One of the challenges that we see with, with uh, a lot of our clients is our stuff traps us and it provides stress to our life. We don't even really realize it, but it's there. When you step back and you look at, if you walked in a day in our shoes and see all the clients that we service, it is your stuff that creates a lot of the problem. It's your environment. Um, and then we, you know, we say we just, we're your personal assistant. <laughs> Whatever you need, just let us know and we'll get there. Um, this is an older picture of Robinson and Chris. And our mission is to honor God with the highest level of competency, care, and compassion with uncompromising integrity. And everything that we do is based on this mission. Every decision we make, every action we do, has to align with our mission. We have a number of seminars coming up. Uh, we have a Senior Living Options Seminar Wednesday the 27th, and also Wednesday, September 10th, uh, 9.30 to 12.30 at Hawaii Kai Retirement Community. Uh, if you're interested in finding out what your options are. Uh, and then we also have uh, uh, investor seminars for uh, insurance tips as well. And that's kind of the end of our presentation. Um, I think we have a few minutes to take questions. If anybody has any questions, yes. Yes. So the question was, what if your relative is not ready to face this situation, though you want to try to help them? What can be done? Uh, as long as they are welcoming us to their home, we'll come in and, and sit down and talk to you. So what you do is call Cynthia. Cynthia will give you a uh, one-hour free 
consultation. There's no cost, no charge to it, no obligation. Okay. Call us when you think that time is right. So come in and we'll, we'll just talk and find out what, what the goal is. Uh, what are you planning to do? Okay. What are you trying to accomplish? And when? And we'll make that conversation and dialogue and can maybe set a possible plan for them to reach their goal. Could you work around them? Uh, if they're willing to let us work around them, yes. We will never do anything that is against somebody's wishes. If it's dangerous, it could be a different sort of story. So if it's dangerous, then they have to realize that it's dangerous, right? And they still have to, because if they're gonna live there, if they're physically removed from the property, meaning if they're in a care home or in a hospital, and they would want us to help them. We, we will only work with somebody if they're willing to do it, right? So we can't come in and say, I'm gonna help you clear out your stuff, then they come back and they come back and say, no, why'd you touch my stuff, right? Even if it's your family member, you don't own it. So it's it's very really difficult for us to, to help them with unless they want to help. What's interesting though is once we show them pictures of before and afters, what do you think they like, the before or the after? So in their mind, that helps. So we can do a presentation like this for them to give them some vision of what life could look like. Because most people can only see what they see, right? They only see their scenario, their situation. Though, if we can point a picture of a better life, then they're gonna say, well, I want that. Then it turns them. Then it says, okay, I'm willing now to, to have you kind of talk to me about that. I think there was another question I was saying. Yeah. come out and do a free consultation. Um, there are a few factors that we need to consider. One would be what we're going to be doing, the amount of stuff that's there, um, the time frame if you need to be done yesterday or if you have a couple months. And the third is actually who we're going to be working with. Because sometimes that is a really big factor on somebody who's going to be resistant or someone who's going to be able to say, oh, yeah, you know, help us answer the questions. So with those factors, we'll come in and we'll do a consultation and be able to give you a free estimate. Now. Um, I think our typical move, clients declaring their three bedroom family home and going into a one bedroom you know, retirement community probably runs anywhere from as low as 2500 to as high as 85000 It just depends. Some clients have more things, some clients have less. Um, and then decluttering clients actually are harder to give you an average because we've had ones that, oh, just come to one room, and then we had, like our largest was a $20,000 house, and it was, a large house with a lot of sound. So it just depends. The the pictures I showed you, that was about an $8,000 home. Okay. And then you would do help with the folks on the vendors and people who have something to do and stuff and then they would know what to do. Correct. We'll help coordinate all the vendors, get you estimates, help you to schedule the job, and then make sure the job is done correctly. Wonderful. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Well, because we, um, in real estate, we help people get their homes ready for sale. We do this a lot, and a lot, and we do like one or two a week. And so we paint a lot of homes, we get a lot of foreign vendors. So we have vendors that are trying to prove it, and they're kind of accountable to us, because they know that we can provide them a lot of work, as long as they do what they say they're gonna do, integrity, right? And they're fair in their pricing, right? And because we do this so much, we understand how much a home should cost to paint, how much, the type of work should cost to do. So they're not going to pull the wool over eyes. Right? And we don't let our clients pay them until we're satisfied. Right? So we kind of have that buffer for our clients. Give, give them that security of who to trust, how much should it cost, how long should it take, what goes first, all of that process. Any other questions? Comments? Yes. Do you think that she would be resistant to 
It's actually, we find it's actually harder for family now. Because it's too close, there's too much history, too much emotion, right? And uh, it, we find it's easier actually for an outside person like us to help because it's, you know, they, they want to help. And our, when you work with our staff, they're just really nice people. And they're very courteous. And, and so you won't have that shortness as you would with a family member. It's easier to be short with a family member. So for us, it's not. That's not the issue because we do this all the time. So sometimes a family member may say, "I want to help mom. Mom needs help. She's trying to do it on her own. She can't do it. Can you just come in and help?" Actually, the kids actually have paid for our service to help mom. And they say, "Oh, this is my friend. You know, uh, they have a company that does this, and you know, we're gonna come and help." And we say, "Wow." And you know, once you sit down and talk with her, they say, "Yeah. What's the next step?" Just looking at what's next. Oh, we can set a schedule. We come in once a week for three hours, four hours, uh, and then we can increase that to twice a week, and increase that to three times a week. And just gradually get them comfortable with that decluttering. Because what will happen is, after the second week, they really get it. Wow, I kind of like this. Then throwing away stuff is easier. Once they see progress, like Cynthia was mentioning, it gets so much easier. It's just that first couple days, it's a little more like, kind of like dating, right? I don't know if I really like to say right? After a while, it's a guy, kind of like this. Yeah, I've seen those shows on TV when they're borders, yeah, are so resistant. They don't want to throw away a single piece of anything. Yeah. But if you also see the dynamics, we also see that parents don't want to listen to what their kids have to say, right? How many of us want to listen to our kids tell us what to do? I mean, even with our profession, my mom doesn't listen all the time. <laughs> but you know, that's just the way it is. And um, we've actually become really close to our clients. Um, we're, you know, they're like our grandparents, they're like our parents of our own. So we, it, it's not like a professional and your mom, it would be like two friends. Because once they start getting to know us, they're not comfortable with us. They start trusting us to say, oh yeah, you know, you're right. And it is different. It's the professional and a child. So the dynamic is different. But some, sometimes it does work out, and sometimes it doesn't. But most of the time, it's, it's easier when we help out. Yeah. But I would try it and just try not to be the, you know, the mom, what is that for? That kind of tone, because it does change things a lot. Yes, we do. Our, we have two booths. One, our booth is right out here, and the Keller Williams uh, Complete Solution booth.